I have to handle some family matters, some personal family matters that are soon going to take me out of the show for a little bit, and I don't want to do it before getting to a handful of things. I want to replenish myself with the medicine of what is good content around here before I leave. And I want to ask you, Greg Cody, to help me with this because we have some video of, uh, this is Mighty Mouse, right? Demetrius Johnson. Uh, and I want to tell the people who, don't, who might not understand the fighting game that if the fighting game were fair and just instead of, um, I don't know, Jake Paul or Mike Tyson or anybody uh, getting the money, Mighty Mouse, pound for pound, you can make the argument, is the greatest fighter we've ever seen anywhere in the world because he's tiny and it doesn't make any sense that no one can ever hurt him. And there are more ways to hurt him than there were to hurt Floyd Mayweather. It's a bit crazy. And so, Tony, you can speak to this better than me, but this video is in no way surprising to me because Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mouse, would kick everybody's ass who's in front of him, no matter their size or weight. But I think this might be surprising to people, this video. Yeah, so what it is is this is actually an open weight class jujitsu competition that Mighty Mouse is a part of, and Mighty Mouse has competed at about a 135 bantam weight for basically his entire career. And uh, the guy that he's fighting, as you can see on screen, is 6'3, 250 some odd pounds, so it would be basically a heavyweight versus a bantam weight in an open jiu jitsu match. And it takes so this, this video is actually about six to seven minutes long. And for the first five minutes, it's Mighty Mouse trying to figure out exactly where to get this guy down. And the guy's ragdolling him, throwing him around, throwing him around. Then Mighty Mouse finally gets him on the floor, climbs on him like a... You could see here, like, I don't even know what, what he's doing here. It's incredible to see a guy that size. And Mighty Mouse is 38, so, like, he's towards the tail end of his fighting career. Still being able to do stuff like this is incredible. One of the ways uh, that Jake Paul has been so smart about reinventing how you make money in that game is that once upon a time you could have made the argument Anderson Silva was the best pound for pound in the history of the sport. And so when Jake Paul beats him, it seems like he's beating somebody who's credible and legitimate. But he was never known for his boxing prowess. I mean, he was he could also he was strike. A great striker. No, he was he, great by he, that by that sports standard. But too. he was also an incredible kickboxer. He was yeah. a strike he could be a striker, but he wasn't a boxer. And and he wasn't a boxer, and he and he had punching power, but he didn't have a, a boxer's punching power, and he was close to 50. Now Mike Tyson is 57. But this is what I've always liked about the— uh, <laughs> I love the, the only fans on Mighty Mouse's gi, by the way. We actually spoke to Mighty Mouse. You can go check that out on our YouTube page. And he was talking about his only fans, how he trains— he kind of basically puts everything behind a paywall of how he trains, how he eats, the things that he gets ready for, and it's probably on that. Uh, uh, this is like a sports bar discussion if you just totally overlook the fact that they're both brown belts. This is like it's one thing if Mighty Mouse can take down a 250 pound, six foot three dude, and you'd probably have like arguments in sports bars or barber shops that ah, he's just good because look at him, he's small. But if he gets up against a real big tough guy, he's done. According to that sport, they are the same level. And it opens almost the, the conversation of that we always have with fighters. Hey, how long would it take you to do X to X person? And Mighty Mouse, it's like, oh, I'm 5'7", 135 pounds, and I'll beat a guy that's 6'3", 250 in about seven minutes. Oh, but do you guys know, do you understand here, this one has hurt me. It, like, it's actually hurt because Mike uh, got a lot of flack for being the guy who was finally out on the Cleveland Browns because, come on, we can't be that despicable. Not that despicable. What I've always loved about, never mind UFC, mixed martial arts, when I was watching it, when the way they would do it is some guy was coming to the octagon and he was carrying an actual crucifix, a giant, the <laughs> stupidity of, it was so heavy, and he was gassed by the time that he got to the octagon. But I've loved sort of the dirty elements of, oh, we're going to test the Brazilian martial arts, we're going to test the Gracie oh. family in the sewer? Oh, that was, good. look, I've learned a lot. But as an impressionable teenager, the open weight early days of the Ultimate Fighting the Championship, guy shoes. where it was yes, it was mixed martial arts in that you had all these different disciplines combining into one competition. But if you were like I, I practiced Kempo Karate at the time, if you were pounding the table for your discipline, you actually got to see these fights play out. A Bru uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu against a stand up Kempo Karate fighter. There was this Canadian that was just a wet blanket of Kempo Karate skill that would get in the way of dream matchups and you had wrestling backgrounds like Ken Shamrock go in and you legitimately had dream matchups of different styles and then the sport evolved to the point that 
You needed, in order to get anywhere in that sport, you needed to know all the martial arts mixed. When we just saw put something on screen, if we could put that B-roll again, of like early days in the UFC where a guy is wearing shoes, running out there, and a guy with a gi who obviously knows Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, funny you talk about crucifix, the guy puts him in a crucifix, hits him with three elbows, and it was over. Well, they will be able to find, go ahead and find for me, the most primitive of whoever that guy was. I don't even think he was a good fighter, but what I'm telling you about what I've always loved about that sport and the heartbreaking parts of letting it go, because I've had to let it go, and I love the Arts tested against each other, and if you go back to you've that, let the, you've let the sport go, huh? Wow. And you can come back Why? on MMA Hangout anytime yeah. you want. You know, there's an open invitation for I mean, you, Dan. Right? I, I've got my virtues. Uh, I signal them from time to time. It's hard to I let still, it go. I still can't quit this sport. I have so many issues with it. UFC, biggest game in town, total monopoly over this sport, and they have fights that I'll look, I'll overlook things that I can't overlook in my day to day life because I just find a way to put it in a silo. Dan, when Mike when when Sean O'Malley hit Cheeto yeah. Vera with that knee, that yeah. sounded like a baseball bat crack, and Cheeto didn't even fall. he just moved his head back and put it back up. Like that was incredible. I uh, am telling you, Mr. Gods is always making fun of me about how much I love uh, boxing. I'm fighting expert, alleged fighting expert. It's like the one thing I care about in terms of the beauty of sports. Wait a minute, you were on the Foreman beat. Wait a minute, you're going to tell me that I can test all the fighting styles against each other for baddest man on the planet and the earliest incarnations of this sport, they had so many fewer f rules about safety. It was the most yeah. savage thing. Never mind Jack yeah. John McCain calling it cockfighting. Before that, it was the most primitive. It yeah. was... It was dog fighting for humans. It felt like it should have been illegal. It should have been yeah. illegal. And, they, and yes. they fixed the sport, thankfully, to where it's a lot safer for what it is. Uh, introduction of more uh, weight classes being the biggest possible yeah. thing yeah. for that sport. But Demetrius Johnson is just that good. Badass. He's an absolute badass. And yeah. the way that you see his career, he's moved from the UFC. He's now in one championship over yeah. in Asia. Which has affected his legacy. Because he's not in the main show. I mean, sure. he was for a good no, amount of but time. No, but what affects his his no, but no, no, but wait a minute. What affects his legacy is we're only going to respect you so much. The, the, the world, if you're a buck 30. Like, we're not going to actually make you baddest man in the world if you weigh 130 pounds. I mean, I just, saw Con I just saw Conor McGregor get a, a starring role. Like, the UFC will do that. And I just saw Floyd Mayweather buy the whole Gucci store, so I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's a, the one championship versus the UFC. Like, it... Him not getting along with Dana has hurt his name from being brought up consistently in these conversations. I understand what you're saying about Floyd because obviously he made a lot of money and he did it the most amazing way, undented, playing defense in the fighting game. Like, it's ridiculous. The point of to not get hit, and he made all that money doing that. But we will only respect you so much as a fighter unless you're in Ganu. The thing we respect the most is can you knock someone out with one strike? Not... Not, are you the best grappler in the world? Can, with one strike, you f fell any, any person? Like, that, that's where Mighty Mouse suffers from. You've got to have some size on you to have, the, uh, to have the amount of menace that this requires to be baddest man in the world. Yeah, the and the Mike Tyson, the Mike Tyson type. And funny now, you look at it, Anthony Joshua knocks out Francis Ngannou three times in a row, knocks him out of the canvas, knocks him out cold. Francis Ngannou said in the second round he had no idea he was fighting. He was just kind of standing there like, oh, wait, I'm in a fight. And we've always talked about Anthony Joshua have been like a great boxer, but kind of never really takes that next step to be best of the world. And it feels like you look at Francis Ngannou, who took Tyson Fury to the judges' scorecards, and it's like, man, you look at those guys, how big they are, and it's it's impressive where you look at Mighty Mouse and you see him do something against a guy six three you know two hundred fifty pounds you're like oh that's cute. <laughs> yeah, Amin is back. I am grateful for his presence. Oddball every day except for Monday. Oddball is oh I love that commercial you did. I mean Oddball I can feel it getting stronger and stronger. Yes, it's only a matter hey, of time. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And then we get bigger. Um, I am waiting for you to be a bigger oddball. I am. I am. I want bigger balls around here yeah. in general. There is something, oddball though. Oddball is positively throbbing right now. And you know it. Caleb. <laughs> Caleb. <laughs> my material. Caleb Williams. We could have used it at the end of the last segment. We yeah. could have used a stray you know. and you know it as Tony you lost know it. track of the clock and <laughs> oh. just started talking about mixed martial arts in a way that was too serious. Back in my day today? Or? Is there a back in my day? 
There is actually. Are, hey! What? Were you not going to tell anyone? It was. Wait a minute. We you guys, Tuesday. guys, Tuesday. Wait, 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 it's a Tuesday. Seriously. I don't understand. Wait, that. we've got to do that. There was also, I got to get to Caleb Williams. There's news breaking with Caleb Williams. I've got to get to Greg Cody is mad at Tim Kirkshin and me because Tim Kirkshin's podcast with his son just got so much promotion. Seriously. I mean, the Greg Cody show with Greg Cody and Chris Cody invented the father and son podcast. And then yet I can't get a shout out on this show. I mean, I'm sitting right here. He's got a point. Mark Jackson has a podcast with his son now. Seriously. It's, it's all the rage now. Father, where, son where podcast. My, where are my royalty checks at? Okay, he's mad at Tim Kershaw. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, we've got to update our March Sadness tournament as well. But I was hugely surprised, and I don't know the discomforts of this. Juju, are you surprised in any way that a means father watches this show? And a means an adult. He, he, he's a front office person. Uh, look at Billy yawning right there. Our parents, nobody <laughs> here. It's unrelated no, to this. Our, our parents here do not watch what we're doing here. I mean, with a grandfathered aged parent um, who I don't know why he would be watching this show or either. his son at all. And I certainly can't see him understanding what you're doing here, throwing away your career. Oh, so, wouldn't mean, he be a father aged father? No, he's, gra he's grandfather aged. <laughs> really? he's a grandfather. No, is that right? Greg's right. Thank hmm. you. But my guess is, how old is I your dad? How old is your dad? My, my, da my dad's about your dad's age. So he's almost eighty. Yeah, wow. yeah but he's that's a that's a dad's age too. Yeah, he's still dad. Yeah. Well, you got to be. It's kind of a prereq. Why don't you just say the age yeah. rather than yeah. just confuse me? Because uh, grandfathers can be very young these yeah. days. Because I mean, even though sometimes he sounds like a child, is an old person, and his sounds father like is child. much older. Just wow. reveal the age. Child. Kurt that's Russell's good. playing ninety-three year olds out here. Sounds like a child. That wow. sounds like a, a <laughs> blast. Sounds I'm like just saying, there, when you go to the All Star game and get drunk and don't produce any footage, some people well, can say, say that's that the now behavior. he listens to the show, Dan. Does he watch the show only when you're on or every day? So this is what happened. Oh, I, yeah, was, I was, I was, only. <laughs> <laughs> I love the old guy. Only on Tuesdays. I love Cody and his back in my day. Thank you, Billy. My my dad and I, I don't know if your dad is of this age, but my dad is of the age where he watches YouTube videos on his phone very loudly. My dad's not eighty. Okay. That my dad is at that age, right? Where everything he watches is full blast, and so I hear. And sometimes it's news, and sometimes it's it's soccer highlights, and sometimes it's something, a little funny skit or whatever. So I'm listening one day, and I'm like, "Huh, these voices sound real familiar. What what's he listening to?" And then I realize, oh, he's listening to us on a day when you weren't there, when, on a day when I wasn't there. But then I thought maybe it's just one of those videos, right? So then. <laughs> The other day, he says, oh, they really made fun of you about that shot, huh? And I said, what are you talking about, father? He's like, because I thought maybe, just maybe he just caught it off like Facebook or something like that. He's like, yeah, Dan and those guys, they were really getting into you on that. And I was like, oh, you, you watch the show now? Is this a thing? Yeah. So now, now we have to be careful. Yeah. CeeLo Green became a grandfather at the age of 35. Wow. wow. My mommy that, watches this what? show. My mommy watches this show every Does day. Does she? Especially every Well, she watches it when I'm on it, but Yeah, my dad's the same. Yeah. Yeah. My father would be 108. I'm just saying. Would he watch the show? Yeah, would he watch yeah, the he show? Would, he yeah. is right now. From heaven. Yeah. Kiefer yeah, Sutherland right. was under 40. What? Wow. I was nominated and I achieved the 40 under 40 award uh, with help from Roy Bellamy this this year. Wow, Salute congrats. To Roy Bellamy. There I you go. I a big deal about it, but since no. we're talking about 40s. Forty under go. forty? No, that's 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 wow. pretty big. Uh, again, your mom must be real proud. Yes, sir. Thank my, you so much. My dad is not because I haven't been nominated. For I other was in Suey's. I was at church the other day, and the priest said that he baptized someone and baptized their grandparents. I immediately turned to someone sitting next to me. And go, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems impossible. In the church. I did say it in the church. Lord if mercy. anything, it seems like a good place to be forgiven, right? But, like, come on. That's that, efficient. That was a whopper, That's right? That's a place where you're efficient? It, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> is, is that the best place to oh, lie? Oh, yeah. You go, if you're going to murder someone, do it right before you go to confession. Because then it's Boom. just like you turn around right here. Absolved. Was it Father Eddie? <laughs> no, that's a whole other it is allegedly. I'm not sure that Juju can. Uh, you're talking about being efficient in how it is you sin, so that you can sin quickly and get Correct. it immediately absolved. So just do it. In, just do it in the I confessional box. Yeah. Speaking of efficiency, we haven't gotten to any of the topics you were crunched for time on. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Juju. I appreciate it. Uh, but one of them was Transition. his dad watches the show because nice. I'm confused by it. But let's get to Greg Cody's back in my day because I didn't even know we had one of those.
And now, it is time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guide, Greg Cody, with Back in My Day. Okay, here it is. Sorry. Adultery! No! Oh, yeah. yeah! We are back. back. That is waiting the, for this one. Wait, 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 wait. By accident, what just happened? I think that's the record. Roy, for years, has been counting the amount of time that he pregnant pauses there. That was the record because he was looking for his papers. Because we, he was surprised that he has it back in my day. <laughs> I got a lot of papers here. I'm a busy man. Adultery! First, an important disclaimer. This back in my day is absolutely not an essay born of personal experience. And if it were, what was the chance I'd actually admit it on a national podcast? Okay, let's be honest about something inherently dishonest. Adultery, infidelity, cheating, whatever you want to call it, was so much easier back before technology came along and ruined everything. Or rather, so I'd imagine the clandestine <laughs> Casanovas would lament. Cheating was easy once. You just had to make sure you weren't doing it around friends, neighbors, or coworkers. So if you lived in Mayberry... The two of you drove up to Mount Pilot, got a corner booth at the bar, then a room at the Notel Motel, and called it a night. You were blessedly incommunicado. There were no cell phones allowing any busybody snoop to record or photograph you. You were completely out of touch until you dropped a dime in a payphone. There was no CCTV closed-circuit cameras spying on every movement you made, no facial ID technology, no TMZ with hired spies around every corner, no social media splaying wide everyone's personal life. Now, every text message and voicemail exchange is retrievable. You think delete search history actually does that? Ha <laughs> ha, your naivete is so cute. Back in my day, you wrote a <laughs> fake name in the motel guest book. The board clerk said you're in room nine, Dr. McGillicuddy, and you went on your merry way. Now there'd be an unblinking ring camera above the door ratting on you. It isn't just relationship cheats who have it tough these days. How the heck do criminals get away with anything? Snatch somebody's purse on a city street and see how fast the cops shout out closed circuit images of you in the act all across social media with close-ups, nine different angles, and slow motion. You think that old-timey ski mask works? There's technology to unmask you now. The day is coming when we will all have a computer chip in our noggin allowing the law to trace and catalog our every step. The cell phone in your pocket is doing the same thing today, bugling your whereabouts 24-7. Modern-day debauchers and lotharios have only two choices. You either give up your cheating ways or you hopelessly bemoan technology and understand that today... A smartphone would be pinging your exact location in that dark corner booth as you swig your third Manhattan. <laughs> I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Yeah. Wonderful. Encore. Uh, the No Tell Motel, is that a Greg Cody original, or is it's, that... It's... That's on T-shirts uh, beginning today in the Greg Cody merch store. Hey. See, it's all interconnected. No, the No Tell Motel is, uh, is a known entity. Yeah, that's that's, that's a thing, a thing that yeah, people from your day, the thing. adulterous people yeah, from yeah. your day, would talk about. The yeah, other thing there, allegedly, the they don't tell. It's the, a motor lodge, the motor lodge with the shuffleboard court out front. Ah, do you guys know what was most back in my day about that entire thing? Uh, because I don't think he caught that. I did not realize. Bugling? All right, yep. the word bugle. I've yeah. never heard the word bugle used besides for describing jeans. Thank you, <laughs> the bugle boy. Greg Cody remembering a time. Where there was a payphone that you put ten cents oh. into. Yes, that's true. I'm 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 not familiar with that payphone. Dan, that payphone. I did not know it existed in this country. A payphone that took merely ten cents. Yep. I I remember when you could put a dime in a payphone. That's right. And if you were making a long distance call, the operator would interrupt the call to tell you you had to deposit more, more money. money. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I remember Carrot Top had a commercial called One Eight Hundred Collect, where you didn't even yeah. need no money. You just dialed One Eight Hundred wow. Collect, and you charged the hell out of whoever you're calling. I just yeah, realized I the concept of collect calls for yeah. a certain generation. Ten, ten, three, two, one. Yeah. Must blow. Their what am mind. I collecting? What are they collecting besides money? That's it. Money. One Eight Hundred Collect. This this is how it works, Tony. You pick up the phone. You don't have any money. You call 1-800-COLLECT. They say, what number are you trying to reach? I'm trying to reach 555, whatever, whatever, right? Then they say, you say your name. And you say, hey, this is Tony. And then the person on the other end would have to accept the charges.
for the call. It was like a prison call. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, yeah, but exactly. here, here was or the trick. Or you say, Bob had a baby, it's a boy. There you go. You, you, <laughs> you just say, what's your name? And you just say, ah, blah, 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 and then you just hang up. So then somebody else would be on another payphone somewhere? Or? No, like you'd no. be calling someone's uh, house. House, okay. Like, How'd you come pick me up for school? Us. Yep, there you go. Uh, <laughs> can you guys find for me that Carrot Top commercial? Let's just play it uh, unwatched, unedited. Just play as fast as you can the entirety of that Carrot Top commercial so we can see what Amin is talking about. Oh, it's one 800 call ATT. Young Carrot Top. Yeah. Oh, my God, look at the life in his face. He's <laughs> an age today. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You guys thought he was on a bender in this Las Vegas. This is before Vegas. he whoa before he hit the gym. Whoa! In confidence. That did tell him. In confidence. confidence. <laughs> Who wasn't, by the way? <laughs> what happened with Caleb Williams? Oh, uh, the internet is. Uh, he was at a women's tournament game, and he flashed his painted nails and his his phone case, and people are saying it appears like he's wearing lipstick and you know the the internet's having a go at him the first mention is man colin coward's about to f this guy up tomorrow <laughs> salute to caleb i'm proud of you you know what i mean i like it no you man like it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a very like a russell brand type of yeah, motif yeah, yeah, hey. living his life salute <laughs> to young brother russell brand huh um you know i would just say this right now that's look at me louis behavior like i got i'm going to a women's game what should i wear lipstick and pink nails, of course, and a pink phone case. Look at me, Louie. <laughs> that's Monty Williams, the original Look at Me, Louie. You think that's Monty Williams' behavior? That's solidarity. You are just a self involved. Yeah. Could I have that choppy chop concierge, please? <laughs> <laughs> I have trouble with that word, and I never say maestro. I say it maestro. maestro. I spend it, I say maestro. it in Spanish. I say no, but it's in Spanish. I'm I'm pronouncing it in Spanish. Yeah, you also pronounce like the uh, the government entity that puts things in outer space after a city in the Bahamas. That is true. I mean has left That's all. It, I mean has left <laughs> mid segment. I don't know where he's running off to. Maybe that looked like the walk of, you know. He had to go to the bathroom. Uh, you know, I'm in a like chat that, with him. Yeah. I'll let you know All what right, happens. We will get back. Did he eat food him. that was sharp? All right. Uh, you sharp, guys what? have been uh, <laughs> sharp. He took <laughs> the under on his own. Uh, <laughs> That's one way to swallower. Man, this fruit is sharp. Did he penguin walk out of here? Was it too flavorful, the food that he had? His is hair it? looks small. Dancing swords, as some would say. Okay. Thank you, Billy. Uh, thank you. Why are you taking credit for dancing swords? I invented mean, that, that. I invented dancing swords. Yeah, he invented it. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and tell people what dancing swords are? And you didn't invent it. Uh, you, you're claiming that you invented the phrase dancing swords? Yeah, in the context of bowel movements. Mm hmm. Right. You can't believe that oh, you've oh, invented it. Oh, oh, oh the, Juju's got to go. He might, he might be going Juju. to take a QK. Oh. Exactly. That Another one. I mean, no. back to no. a magic trick. That, that, that was a cute okay. That was a super cute cake. All right. I mean, uh, why did you have to leave? And while we're waiting for you, explain what dancing swords are, Greg Cody. You claim to have invented this. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I invented dancing swords in the context of bowel movements. What mm -hmm. happens is when your your innards are gurgling to the point where you know something's about to come out like a jet stream, and you got to sit down and do it on the Ring of Honor. Mm. That's like when, when you're walking up a ladder and you feel something splatter. Yeah, thank you. Or exactly. the or the parlay unders are what you're trying to hit. Right, those are dancing swords. Is that what happened to me, or did you just leave because you didn't know we were on the air? I left because we didn't know that we were on the air. Okay, why did Juju leave? Dancing swords? Uh, I don't know. He's back. He's back. Okay, very good. Let's continue on with the show because uh, I've March got... Sadness. I, we're going to get to March Sadness in a second, but you guys have been promising me that Greeny had an awful basketball take and no one shared it with me. In fact, one of you was claiming it's the worst take in the history of basketball takes, and I thought maybe with Amin here we could uh, we can get some commentary that would explain stuff better than we can explain it. Mike Greenberg, because uh, I guess he was paying attention to the NCAA tournament because Northwestern was playing in it, had the take that if UConn, University of Connecticut was playing in the NBA's Eastern Conference, they would make the playoffs. Wow. Oh my God. That Get was, him out of here. You should be, some of this stuff should be, a, you got to be accountable for some of these takes, brothers. Yeah. Like, you be saying this stuff into microphones in front of millions, the whole world. You can't get away with some of this stuff. Right. Victor Wembanyama has 15 wins. Oh. <laughs> just, just so you know. Yeah, that's across all sports. I remember back when Alabama was the big thing in college football, we like, Alabama could beat the Cleveland Browns. Are you kidding me? I don't know what happened to your microphone, but the Pistons yeah. and the Wizards would uh, trounce UConn routinely, often, almost every time. Jordan Poole would have 75 points. 
Absolutely. He would light Jordan Poole would light them up. Right. And I don't I don't even think that the Yukon girls would put themselves in that position. Like you shouldn't speak for these women. Like don't say stuff like this into a microphone, Mr. Professional uh, journalist. <laughs> is that done? You guys are done dragging poor Greeny? Who it just was got just an it? awful take because Northwestern got dominated by UConn, so clearly this team should make the NBA playoffs. I think the playoffs is wild. <laughs> That's wild. How many, how many games does UConn win? Put a number on it. I mean, how many games? If UConn plays an what entire the NBA like twelve? Season, no, they wouldn't win 12 games. They, they would win zero games. It's uh, neither no. here nor there. They, they, they'd win like two. Because there'd be just a night where nobody played and everybody. Depends if they're playing the Raptors and not, someone has the under. Right. Exactly. John Tay is on the court. John Tay. But the points better be what? 15, 17 points, right? I don't think your microphone works in any way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm you're leaning into a microphone. It's Put it right on. up to your mouth. Okay, I don't Put know. Put it right up to your mouth. Closer. Uh, Greg, for a month now, we've been telling you That's the microphone's in the wrong place. My you're not putting it in. microphone is right here. Wow, you're... look how much better it sounds. Okay, it's crazy. I've been uh, screaming into a mic here. Greg, for a, a month. ramshackle operation well, Mike is screaming. Get better, get better mics. <laughs> hmm. Christ almighty. <laughs> Other than Mike Ryan, you got no working mics in here. Oh, if Fuentes is outside, too. Nice. I nice. mean, well, not counting Mike. I meant in the room. I meant in the immediate room. <laughs> that kind of thing. Exactly. Thank you. That kind of thing. You should talk to Gotta say wife. it a little quicker. That kind of thing. That kind of thing. Exactly. Thank you. Quick Come learner. on, amateur. Juju, quick learner. <laughs> Um, but he should not be allowed to say things like this. I'm just no. like he's a good host and stuff, and he has passion. He shouldn't about be allowed. Judge, You're no, taking away been. his freedom no, of speech. He should go to jail. Yeah, I mean at least an hour. That's a uh, dumb one. <laughs> you think he should be suspended? Dumb one. That man has made no, a lot of money no. in his career, and it's that's just a, a very dumb thing to say. I want to follow Juju's threat. He should go to jail for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> at least, bro. Like actual <laughs> hey, jail hey, for one hour. What kind of jail are we talking about here? Because I would love. I greenlit. Well, <laughs> Greenlit. We no know, pun intended. We know yeah. it's white collar. Like we know it's tennis courts. Now I, I don't know anything. Now this is just my opinion. But uh, the sauna in here is not quite hot enough. Want him <laughs> walking down the court or holding his sheets, please? <laughs> it's a literal <laughs> island. I didn't know it was a real island. <laughs> just to be clear, you guys think that Mike Greenberg and I'm here for this. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to call for it publicly. I would yeah. pay a great amount of money for us to imprison Mike Greenberg for one hour, one hour. for that take. <laughs> I would pay. I, I would pay. I would pay five hundred thousand dollars to Jeez. imprison. <laughs> to, 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 you know what? How about you do this? You give me the money. Yeah. I'll go figure out what the schematics Frame are on him that for murder. Right, and then we'll get back to you. I'll let you know. It can't be murder. He's only got to go to prison for one hour. One right. liquid hour. Yeah. He man. knows better than anybody that he would be a vending machine for sex in prison. For <laughs> oh, yeah. He knows better I mean, than anybody. One, who right? amongst than us? Anybody. Right. No, I, I, who amongst us? Fair enough. Yeah. But him more than I most. Mean, he on, does appear to be a mark. <laughs> him more than most. In an hour? What, in an hour. What, what if Damn. in an hour he comes out as like, the man in prison. <laughs> his yeah. hair He's just running it. <laughs> Tattoos. Yeah. Right. Takes out the, the got a razor blade in, in his mouth. Yard. Takes out the golic of the yard. Like, He's just running run the juice. joint. <laughs> right. like, like Carlton when he spent the, the <laughs> afternoon <laughs> in MacArthur Park. He's right. got guards yeah. bringing him phones. <laughs> like Will Ferrell when he had the razor blade on his, on his cheek. <laughs> they open the cell for him. He, he just closes the door back like, nope. <laughs> He would tell us that himself. If we were interviewing him right now, he would say, "I do. I would do very poorly in jail." I no, I think he'd be institutionalized real quick. Like, like Billy said, I can't leave. This is my life now. I don't even remember what the outside. I think he like, shows up and he picks a fight with the biggest, meanest, toughest yeah. dude in the yard. He turns into a Muslim in jail. <laughs> Cool See what on. happened was, <laughs> brothers, it was a conspiracy. Aaron Rodgers hurt his Achilles. <laughs> it is, uh, it is a pretty hot take. Why is he doing that? Is he just does he believe? Because that? Northwestern he, lost to UConn. Be because that is why he's that. doing it. He's covered sports for too long for him to. I mean, yeah. I don't even know what he's doing. Is he being gratuitously? He's been covering sports for a no, long I th time. I, I genuinely think he believes this because he followed Northwestern for two games. Dan, and he saw UConn look very good. You know how it is. You get caught up in the air when. You're on the mic. You say something you regret. You got to keep going with it. It is what it is. It happens to the best of us. Is he yeah. trying to get his daughter or one of his daughter's cousins into UConn, maybe, mm. with a nice take? Uh, I mean, uh, I want to get to March Sadness, but the Celtics last night lost in the only way that you can lose for us to have any questions about the Celtics in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. To, to a, an Atlanta Hawks team that I don't think many people – 
would find to be daunting or even capable of a 30-point comeback against anybody, let alone the best But team it's a regular season game. Who yep. cares? Why does it matter? It only matters one team in the league. Like, honest to God, yep. that, that game only matters because of the questions we're asking about that team. Yeah, if, if that happened to the Nuggets, we wouldn't say anything. If it happened to anybody the else. Thunder, we wouldn't anybody say anything. Else. For them, and this is where I go back to what I said last time I was on the show, which is, Joe Mazzulla, you can do all this cute contesting people's jump shots and all that. When you're winning, the moment you're not, all of that, we start saying, well, I don't know if I can trust what I'm seeing. And that's the problem. But ultimately, they know that they aren't going to answer those questions in March or early April. Those answers come once the playoffs start. Billy, we're going to get to March Sadness in a second. But they said they found me. They said they found for me a means commercial for his. uh, I don't know if you saw everything that happened here, Greg, but I mean, I mean, had a very embarrassing viral moment Mm. on the Internet and he really owned it and turned it around in his favor. And I'm helping people uh, with this bit of content. He also got a law degree uh, in the last couple of weeks every year. Thousands of lowlights are taken out of context and disseminated across social media. It's called viral decontextualization, and it afflicts thousands of former NBA players and weekend warriors alike. Hi, I'm Amin Al Hassan, and I was once a victim of viral decontextualization. Let me help you fight back. If you or a loved one have suffered a viral video of a basketball play that is not representative of your playing ability, contact the law offices of Amin Al Hassan right now if you've suffered from a viral video of a basketball play that is not representative of your playing ability call the law offices of amin el hassan right now he is 100 percent a real lawyer don't let viral decontextualization ruin your life call amin and get your reputation clean watch this pass me the rock hey ain't you that guy from the internet yeah but i'm not who my video said i am Please don't wait. Stop viral decontextualization. Call 1 800 Oddball or visit www.townhorrendous.com and have a mean fight for you. I mean, what are you making me read? There are a thousand things I like about that That's as, great. as video, never really mind good. audio. But Charlotte stole it from Amin with the way that she said lawyer and what she did at the end. Because Amin tried to steal that video. And, and the video is great, Amin. The, what they did on the video side, really funny. Uh, that, that felt like a real commercial. Yeah, the tinkling piano was uh, a maestro touch. The Thief of Joy. The Thief of Joy is comparison, Dan. Everybody in that involved. Bravo. And to my brother, two words. Ass off. Bravo, bro. Wow, that's the first time Juju's ever given me that award. Really? He always says I'm ass on anytime I'm doing any of these things. First time? How many times have you failed to get uh, Juju's? Thousands. (laughs) Thousands. That's the first one? The first ass off I've ever gotten. You can't give him away. What's your favorite part? You turning around to the camera at the beginning, like for no good reason? Shout out to Antonio, man. That was his idea. He told me to just turn this way and then turn back from this. this You're welcome. I really can't shake Muslim Greenie. As, just, as soon as it was mentioned with the glasses and all that. Bean pie, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. Of I didn't talk to anybody, <laughs> and I don't know anything. <laughs> Muslim greenie in prison is what we've done. And all this happens inside of 14 minutes. <laughs> Damien, <laughs> Damien Woody landed on us. 